After all, if you've got to keep your husband from going back to an old flame, well, you're not going to let anything like a double murder stand in the way now, are you? National Broadcasting Company presents The Adventures of the Abbots, starring Claudia Morgan and Mandel Kramer as Pat and Jean Abbott, those popular characters of detective fiction created by Francis Crane, whose current book is Death in Lilac Time. NBC invites you to join Pat and Jean each week at this time for another recorded adventure in romance and crime. Now here is Jean Abbott to set the stage for tonight's puzzle in Murder. Pat and I had been on a case in Pittsburgh. When it was over, having been brilliantly solved by my Pat, who's a tremendous detective, we had an invitation from an old school chum of Pat's, Josh Fielding, president of International Steel. Josh invited us to drop by and tour his steel plant. Pat and I stood beside Josh as he led us past the huge, boiling cauldrons of hot, liquid steel. You make quite a mean kettle of soup in those cauldrons, Josh. Yes, it's mean, all right, Pat. Some of it's up to 3,000 degrees. Now, if you look at that catwalk crossing over your head toward the cauldrons... Mm -hmm. Oh, what a terrific view. Look at that catwalk. It's so far up. Look, Pat. Pat, that man up there. Good heavens, he's falling. He'll fall into that hot steel. I'll never forget the sight of that man as he fell past the girders. His hands clutching helplessly at the air. His face twisted in unspeakable fear. I would have passed out if Pat hadn't grabbed me and carried me outside. Sometime later, when I'd calmed down, we were in Josh Fielding's office. Of course, we'll skip the rest of the tour, Mrs. Abbott. I'm sorry you've been so upset. Oh, I'll be all right now, Josh. You seem to have done much better than I did. You, you've really taken it in stride. <laughs> Unfortunately, these accidents in my plant occur quite, well, quite frequently. I become used to them. Well, as used to them as a man can be. <laughs> it's, it's all part of the human equation. If we can't write disaster off now and then, we'd all go mad, wouldn't we? <laughs> I'm sorry, though, that it disturbed you, Mrs. Abbott. I was hoping you'd feel well enough to, uh, oh, take a quick look at our research lab. Thank you, Josh, but... I, I'd, I'd rather not. Uh, Pat, you know who works in there? Laura Stewart. Not the Laura Stewart. The belle of the old campus herself? Exactly. She turned out to be a remarkable chemist. I put her in my lab last year. Laura Stewart? Mm-hmm. Josh, you remember the night of college when Laura and I got accidentally locked in the gym? I never thought that was an accident, Pat. No, not if I know Pat it wasn't. Darling, you never told me about that. Well, he never told you about Laura Stewart. Why, he and Laura were locked in... Did <clears throat> you uh, ever see anybody else uh, from the old gang, It Josh? was the talk of the campus. She was a ravishing girl and... Go on. <clears throat> isn't, it, uh, isn't it awfully hot in here? Now, come on, Pat. Step into the research lab with me and say hello to Laura. She'll be so glad to see you. I'd like to take a look at her myself. Well, some other time, maybe. Uh, let's go, Mr. Fielding. Uh, which way is it to the research lab? I've always been interested in research of uh, various types. I see. Well, it's right through that door down the hallway. Just follow me. Oh, oh, oh. Just, just a moment. Stand right here, please. That's the warning buzzer. It means that someone's coming out. We'll have to wait here a second. Let these men pass. Careful. Just stand back, please. Uh, well, what are those men carrying? Grams of radium. What? In the world? Well, what noise is that? A Geiger counter. Oh, well, I've never heard one. 
detects radioactivity, doesn't it? Yes, we have to be very careful. All right, fine. This way to the lab, please. There she is, Pat. Laura Stewart. Why, Pat Abbott. Oh, darling. Hello, Laura. Where have you been all these years? Oh, you've got to give me a great big kiss for Aunt Lang Syne. Just you come here to Laura. Laura and... I'd like you to uh, meet my wife, Jean. I still haven't met anyone who sends me the way that Pat... Your wife? How do you do, Miss Stewart? I'm always glad to meet an old friend of Pat. Hello, Mrs. Abbott. Uh, why don't you uh, show Pat and Jean around the lab, Laura? Of course, uh, Josh and I... Uh, uh... Laura, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of meeting Mr. and Mrs. Abbott. Oh, yes, Pat and Mrs. Abbott. Uh, uh, this is Mr. Jordan. Hello. Uh, how do you how do? How do you do? Tim Jordan's head of my research lab, Pat. Oh? That must be very exciting work, Mr. Jordan. Oh, it is, Mr. Abbott. Especially here at Josh's plant, where he gives us free reign. Josh, I'm going to be the first to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, Laura, dear. <laughs> That's very sweet. Oh, is it your birthday, Mr. Fielding? Well, happy birthday, Josh. Thanks. And if you two don't join the rest of us at my home for a party tonight, I'll never speak to you again. We'd love to. No, I'm not waiting for the party to give you my present, either. I'm going to be the first to do that. Here. Laura, what a beautiful fountain pen. <laughs> Why, it makes my present for Josh look sick. Oh, don't be silly, Tim. It's nothing, really. Now, Laura, why don't you and Tim uh, close up the lab and come over to my house right now with Pat and Jean? I'll mix my usual perfect cocktail. Oh, uh, oh no, no I'm, I'm afraid I couldn't do that. Uh, uh, I, I really couldn't. Uh, I... Well, I have too much work to do. Hmm? You run along. I'll meet you there later. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. You, well, you go along with Pat and Mrs. Abbott, and I... I... I'm sorry, I can't go now. All right, Laura, you don't have to get so upset about it, dear. Tim, how about you? You can come with us now, can't you? I'm right behind you, Josh. No, Tim. What? What's the matter, Laura? You feel all right? I feel quite all right. It's Well, it's just that I... I have something here in the lab that I, I want you to look at, Tim. You... Well, you can go with them later, can't you? You, you don't have to go now, do you? Well, it isn't a matter of life and death. And don't, don't go now, Tim. Stay here, I... I've got to talk to you. Well, all right, Laura. Just don't excite yourself this way. I'm not excited. Come on, Pat and Jean. We'll see these two later. Don't be late, Tim. You drag Laura out of this lab whether she wants to work or not. It's my birthday, and I won't stand for any nonsense. We'll be waiting for you at my home. Bye, Pat. And Miss Abbott. So long, Laura. See you later. So nice to have met you, Miss Stewart. And bye, all. We won't be late. Uh, here's the door, Pat. Uh, one of you men open the safety door. Well, your old flame may be a very glamorous-looking woman, Pat, but I'm afraid she's on the hysterical side. Don't you know why? Why? You've got a theory? Mm-hmm. It's because she saw me again. Oh, you can see. Well, I always it. have that effect on her, darling. No Geiger counter this time, huh, John? No, no, Pat. After all, as, as president of this company, I'm not going to steal from myself. We just take uh, ordinary common sense precaution. But um, ordinary precautions don't seem to work, Mr. Fielding. Why do you say that? Well, I was thinking of that man who fell from the catwalk and was killed. Pat. Yes, Laura? Oh, we drank to Josh's birthday. So this time, I'm drinking to you. And me. And... Certain memories. To us, Laura. And I know which memories you mean, too. Pat, you seem to be having a wonderful time. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, darling. Uh, Laura and I were just talking about, um, about research. Oh, were you? Uh, come on, Pat, uh, and uh, Mrs. Abbott. I want you to meet Dean Kennedy. Hello, Laura. Dean Kennedy, this is Pat and Jean Abbott. Oh, how do you do? Hello. Dean Kennedy is head of the little college here in town. Have you heard of the Independence Institute of Technology? It's a formidable name, Mr. <laughs> Abbott, but a very modest school. Oh, excuse me, there is the birthday boy. I, I want to speak to him again. Josh! Yes, yes, Laura? Uh, would you do a favor for me? Could I have the fountain pen? Would you give it back to me? Give it back to you? <laughs> it's really not the sort of present that I wanted to give you. And you've half a dozen pens already. 
But I like it, Laura. I don't expect you to spend a lot of money on a fancy present. Please, Josh, give me the pen. I want to get something else for now, you. Don't be silly. You gave it to me and it's all over. It was a darn good-looking pen. Well, of course. Forget it, Laura. Will you please give me that pen? No, no, no. Now, skip it, won't you? Josh, give me that pen. Not on your life. Josh, come back oh, here. Now, Laura, why are you so bothered about a silly old... Oh, Josh. Let go of me, Pat. Josh, just wait. Pat. Look at her chasing after Josh up those stairs as though she were playing cops and robbers. Mm. She's determined to get that pen back or know the reason why. Pat! He's falling downstairs! Pat! Pat! Let me see him. Well, call a doctor, someone. What happened? No. No, no! It was an accident. Is he all right? Is he all right? He's dead. I didn't know what I was doing. I I was angry. I pushed him up. I didn't realize that he was so close to the stairs. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. All right, Laura, know. easy now. Easy. Look, I, uh, I I think Laura ought to rest for a while. She'll be all right. She's left alone. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, we'll wait in the other room, Mr. Abbott. Uh, uh, come on, Tim. All right, Dean. I'll help you to that couch. That a girl, Jean. Now, if the rest of you will wait in the other room... Come on, Martha. I say she killed him deliberately. Please, Martha. Let's go, Dean. Uh, certainly, Dean. Let's just get her on that couch, Jean. Now, Laura, stand up. Now, that's right. Now, now, lean on me. That's it, dear. You've got to believe me. I didn't kill him. Mrs. Kennedy hates me, and that's why she said that. Now, Laura, please, lie back. That's it. Uh, I'll go into the dining room. I saw a bottle of vodka in there. I'll be right back, Jean. The uh, phone is out in the hall, too. It's convenient. For what? I'm going to phone the police. Now, Laura, just try to control yourself. You won't help things acting this way. I wouldn't hurt Josh. No. I I just pushed him. I I didn't know. All right. All right. Now, now suppose you just... Uh, Right. Who turned them out? Pat! Pat, come here! Uh, Uh, Pat! Pat! Dean! Dean, where the devil is that light switch? Uh, oh, Jean. Oh, Pat. Oh, Pat, someone turned out the lights. Where did you get that letter open now? Oh, someone came into the room in the dark. I didn't know what was happening. I tried to grab them, and I reached out, and they... They shoved this letter opener in my hand. Better put it down, Jean. Yes, I... It wouldn't help much if anyone saw oh. you with that letter opener. Oh. Oh. Look at Laura. Laura, what... Oh, she... Pat, she's bleeding. Laura, what happened? Uh... Pen. No. Pen. Oh, no. Pat, is she? Yes, Jean. She's been stabbed in the heart. Oh, Pat, I touched that knife. My fingerprints are on that knife. Steady, darling. I'd uh, better do a little bit of clue hunting before we let anybody in here. Let's see here. Oh, Women have more junk in their pockets. Pat, isn't that the top of the pen that Laura gave to Josh Fielding? Yeah. Now, there are other fascinating little items in here. What, for instance? Some letters from Dean Kennedy to Laura. Oh, Dean Kennedy, that little man with the glasses. He's the most harmless, innocent. Good letters? Mm Mm-hmm. And you're not going to read them. I'm censoring them right now. Let me see them. No, no, go away. These are not for little girls. Dean Kennedy, Mr. Jordan. Is, uh, is Laura dead? Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, oh, that's horrible. Horrible. The police are on their way. They'll take over. By the way, the three of you were in the other room before this happened. Now, tell me, did any one of you leave that room at all? Well, I went out to get another drink in the next room. I see. Dean Kennedy, I just wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, yes, yes, Mr. Abbott. I found these letters in Laura's pocketbook. Were you going to buy them? Me? Buy them? You heard me. All right, I... It is true, I... I did write those letters. I've tried to cover up because... Well, I... I married. I, I've worked for ten years to get my job as dean at Independence, and any gossip, whatever it was, could have cost me that job I... But I don't care now. I can't cover up anymore. We're all involved in a terrible murder. And 
Now I certainly don't give a hoot what becomes of me. Well, Dean Kennedy, if I were you, I'd try not to be quite so talkative. You think we might implicate ourselves? Well, we're in it up to our necks now anyway. But I think we can save you a lot of embarrassment. Maybe even save your job. Oh, how? Go home. Right now. Everybody. You and Mr. Jordan, go home. But, Pat. Pat, the police That's are... That's just the point. But the police will be here any second now. And there's a chance, an outside chance, that we can wash this up without seeing all of your pictures smeared across page one of the local tabloid. But if we leave, the police will think... I've handled policemen, Mr. Jordan, for a number of years. Now, don't you worry about what the police will think. Just go home. While there's still time. Well... You're a detective, Mr. Abbott. I'll, I'll take your word for it. I'll do anything you say. Yes, so will I. I. I'll be at my home if you want me. You, you can depend on that. And what Dean says goes for me, too. I'm available any time, Mr. Abbott. Pat, are you going crazy? Why, darling? Well, you've got a double murder on your hands and three suspects. Dean Kennedy, maybe his wife, and Tim Jordan, the research man. Do you question them? Do you hold them for the police? It looks as if we were in a picnic for the campfire girls and everybody can go home. I want them all at home, Jean. Each in his or her own home. And, uh, speaking of the subject, you're going home, too. Uh, <laughs> Lloyds will give you a hundred to one. You don't get me to go home. Jean, go home. Not on your life. With two murders to solve? Darling, do you remember the time in Mexico City when I got mad and spanked the daylights out of you? Call before you come home. I'll be waiting up for you. Very much upset, I went home. Pat swings quite a punch when he spanks. And the last time we had that kind of a session, I couldn't sit down for a week, so I went home. Meanwhile, as I learned later, Pat was traipsing around, of all places, in a car with a friendly policeman. Now, I hope you know what the confounded bejeepers you're doing, Abbott. I think so, Sergeant. What'd you say this gadget was? That's a Geiger counter, Sergeant. Really a simple gadget. Yeah, it's a fine way to solve a murder, riding around all night with a silly box sticking out the window. Well, this silly box, Sergeant, is one of the most important gadgets in the world. You see, uh, it detects radiation. Mm. Now, if there's any radioactivity near this Geiger counter, it starts to click. So what? Well, it's an exercise in logic. Look, Sergeant, what's happened on this case? Josh Fielding, the man who got the fountain pen, was killed. Laura Stewart almost went mad trying to get the pen back. She finally got it. Mm. At least she got the top half of it. Then she was killed. Must be quite an extraordinary pen, huh, Sergeant? Yeah, go on. People wouldn't knock each other off for a pen, even if it did right underwater. Now, why did Laura refuse to leave the research lab with me and Josh after she gave him the pen? And why did she refuse to allow Tim Jordan, the head of the lab, to go out? I don't see the connection. There was a Geiger counter outside the lab, Sergeant. It clicked when we arrived. Obviously, because an employee came out of the lab with some radium. Radium? Mm-hmm. I even complimented the president of the outfit, Mr. Fielding, on his care in seeing that no employee got out of that lab without passing a Geiger counter. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, radium is worth a fortune. Thousands of dollars a gram. Just the sort of thing you would conceal in a fountain pen if you were stealing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it now. Sure, this tomato Laura Stewart decides to get about a hundred grand worth of radium out of the lab, so she sticks it in a fountain pen. Give it to the president, knowing that they wouldn't turn that gadget on when the boss walked through the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that, all right. Then she goes to the party and figures she'll get it back. She'll give him a fancier-looking birthday present, and she'll keep the radium. They have a battle. She shoves him down the stairs. And I find the top of the pen in her pocket. Yeah, meaning somebody's got the bottom half with a fortune in radium inside. Dean Kennedy, Mrs. Kennedy, or uh, that Tim Jordan. And that, Sergeant, is why we are taking this delightfully cool evening ride in the car with a Geiger counter. It can spot radium in a mile area. Mm. So we're going to pass the home of each suspect, and when the counter starts to click... That's where the radium is. I get it. That's the killer. Well, now that I've figured out the whole case, what are we waiting for? Yes, Sergeant. Now that you've figured it all out, what are we waiting for? Oh. 
Well, that's Tim Jordan's house right ahead of us, Abbott. He's the head of the research lab. All right, Sergeant. I'll turn on the Geiger counter. Okay, it's on. Now stop the car. All right. The counter starts to click. He's our man. Okay, listen closely, Abbott. Anything yet? Nope. Drive on. Dean Kennedy's house. Listen closely now, Abbott. Hmm. Nothing doing. No, I don't hear anything. All right, it's the Dean's wife then. Maybe, Sergeant. Maybe. Oh, who else could it be? Here's her house. Dean's wife lives over there. You got that Geiger counter on? Yes, it's quiet. It sure is. Hmm. Wrong again. I don't understand it. It's got to be one of the three. Sergeant, drive me home. Must be something wrong with the way I figured this out. But what the devil is it? Where did I go wrong? Okay, Abbott. Home sweet home. Here you are. Hey, your wife's got the light on. <laughs> I bet she's sore as a pup. You leaving her home while you work out the case. Only I haven't worked it out, Sergeant. There's something wrong. Hey, wait a minute. Holy Aunt Hannah, you hear what I hear? Yes. The Geiger counter's clicking, but it's not clicking, all right. That means the killer's in your house, Abbott. Don't tell me your wife took that radium. Don't be ridiculous. Let's go in. Hey, how do you like that gadget? Clicking like crazy. There's radium in that house of yours, Abbott. There's a killer in there, too, with Gene. Oh, Pat. You got here just in time, Abbott. We were about to leave. Well, if it ain't Mr. Jordan. Sergeant, Pat. Oh, thank heavens you're here. It's Tim Jordan. He's the one who stabbed Laura. I think your husband realized that, Mrs. Abbott. Sergeant, you can turn off that Geiger counter. Now, look, Jordan. Careful, Abbott. You're forgetting something. You've got the other half of that pen, Jordan, with the radium in it. That's just it. I have the radium with me in a needle that was inside the pen. Oh, so... it... oh my arm. You, you let go of my Mr. Abbott, arm. if you were that please take one step toward me, I'll put this needle into your wife's arm. I suppose I don't have to be more specific about what would happen if radium is directly injected into Mrs. Abbott's arm. A very agonizing death, Mr. Abbott. Quite prolonged and unspeakably painful. And there'd be nothing medical science could do. Why, you know... I'm leaving now, Mr. Abbott. And I'm taking your wife with me. Just to be sure my departure isn't interfered with. I'm taking her with me in my car. If there's any attempt to follow me, I'll be forced to use the radium needle. You've got it all figured out very nicely, Mr. Jordan. You've had a good scheme ever since that man fell into the cauldron of hot steel. Was that an accident? Or was he wise to the fact that you were trying to steal radium from that lab of yours? He overlooked a wrong conversation, let us say. Yes, but it was Laura Stewart who finally gave you the real opportunity. She had access to the radium. You must have known radium was missing, so you went through the same logic as I did. When she made the fuss about the pen, you realized Laura had the radium in it, so you stabbed her and stole it. But you were afraid Jean had noticed you in the dark, so you came here to make sure. I'm afraid I haven't any more time, Mr. Abbott. That is... We haven't. Your wife and I. Uh, my car's outside. No. Get moving, Mrs. No, Abbott. Let, let go of my arm. Let them go, Sergeant. Oh. Don't try anything. Oh, but Abbott... Let you... them go, I said. Coming, Mrs. Abbott. Tim Jordan gripped my arm with the radium needle about an inch from my wrist. The slightest movement, and he would have jabbed it deep into my veins. Pat, who'd usually fight like ten Marines, stood grimly watching us go out the door. 
My Pat wouldn't take a chance, however good it was, on anything as dangerous as radium. When we got outside, Jordan took out the gun he'd been carrying and made me get into his car. I'll drive down this road, Mrs. Abbott. Then we'll turn left and hit the highway. I must warn you, if we're followed by a police car, I shall kill you instantly. Don't move, Mrs. Abbott. I can see everything you see. Mr. Jordan, all I want to do is powder my nose. That's a woman's privilege. Uh, all right. I don't see why you should worry about a girl's powdering her nose. I'll just... Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Oh, oh I, I'm so sorry, Mr. Jordan. I'll just take that gun of yours and... Look out! We're going off the road! Jean? Jean, darling? Uh, Wake up, darling. Jean. Uh, oh. <laughs> so you're in the Where... hospital, darling. Oh. Jordan. Tim Jordan. I, I, I blew the powder in his eyes. Mm -hmm. It was very smart, sweetheart. But you should have waited until you were at the stoplight. You know, you knocked over a lamppost, an ice cream truck, and a fire hydrant. Oh. Of course, no one minds about the first two, but there's a little French poodle who's awfully sorry at you for ruining his favorite hydrant. Oh, Pat. Oh, what happened to Tim? He's in the clink. And your picture is in the paper with a very fancy headline. Oh. Daring Girl Captures Radium Killer. It's a nice picture, too. <laughs> Do... Do I look pretty? Hmm. Fair. Hmm. Prettier than your old flame, Laura Stewart? Maybe. Pat. Hmm? Tell me the answer to the biggest mystery in this case. The biggest mystery? What's that? Oh, what happened when you and Laura were locked in the college gym all night? Oh, darling, that was before you and I were married. Well, I, I, I still want to know. Do you see the gorgeous flowers I brought you? Oh, stop stalling, darling. I hate people who stall about a question and change the subject. Jean, what happened with you and that airline pilot when you got caught in the rain in that Paris hotel? Say, they are beautiful flowers, aren't they? Adventures of the Abbots has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>